Well, I want to welcome you back to The Long Show. Sandy again. Hi there. This is going to be the second part of the Keen Senior Center. Yes. And for our viewers, through the magic of TV, we're taping this on the same show, same day, so we didn't, haven't been wearing the same clothes for a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Like we said earlier in the other one, Labor Day, the theater is closed, the movie theater is closed, so we're going to do this today, so we don't have to rerun the same show. Sure. And um, one of the things that, um, this is another tough, um, tough area to deal in, most people don't want to deal in. Elderly abuse and elderly mm -hmm. fraud. Mm -hmm. I was reading um, an article. It said that last year the elderly were defrauded out of $2.6 billion. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the programs that the Senior Center provides to help the, protect the, um, the elderly from, from the fraud that goes on? Fraud is huge with seniors. It's just absolutely astounding in this country. Um, these guys are good and they're so believable. And uh, if you're not really, uh, really up to date on what these folks are doing, y you would think they're the person next door trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you something, but not what you should buy. No. <laughs> and they are. They are so truly believable. And I've seen so many instances where it has just devastated some seniors, literally losing their homes and so forth because of what has happened. Um, we periodically, throughout the year, do have programs through many different avenues. We've had through... Um, uh, Ocean Bank. Oops, now it's called People's Bank. Bank. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, give a wonderful, wonderful presentation at one of our lunches on uh, fraud and what to expect and what to be careful of. Had wonderful handouts. We had a local policeman in the area come and speak about fraud and understanding the telephone and how they go mm -hmm. about it and what to watch for. And uh, if you feel like you're being harassed at all, to certainly call the police. And now, pretty much, you can go back, after you've hung up, you can go back and get that number now with yep. the telephone systems. And that's something perhaps you should report if they're calling over, over and, and over. over again. So th that's just a couple aspects that they would cover. But periodically, all the different aspects are covered throughout <laughs> the year so that they're up to date and be aware. And they have actual handouts that they can keep by their phone or post on the refrigerator or have handy that they can refer to. Now let's go to really worse than fraud, abuse. Mm. We like to, we, a picture of abuse is child abuse or domestic violence, man, mm -hmm. woman punching each other. But, but again, I always say I read, I read a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. But I'm reading article after article of the dramatic increase in elderly abuse, especially by family members, especially when mom or dad has Alzheimer's or one of those expenses mm -hmm. that are just draining the family's resources. It happens more often than we want to know or to even think of. Um, and I know the governor of the state has really pushed over the years that it must be reported if we know there is any elder abuse. And he's really trying to bring attention to that, that it is happening at uh, lightning speed almost. And I, and I don't know if it's necessarily uh, that it's growing that much as, as much as it's, we're becoming more aware of it. I think there might have been some of that there, but it, we're more aware of it now. And yes, um, one has to understand how to protect themselves from ma family members or friends or even of each other. There's a very high alcoholism rate amongst elders the alcohol, as well. Alcohol, depression is getting in drastically yes, increased. Yes, And, you know, we all seem to think, gee, once we're retired, it's kind of easy street and... The stress is less and the stress is not less. And since we are growing older and can live longer, there are more stresses involved as we have fixed incomes. Uh, things are more costly. 
with our households and our lives and medical, the roof on the house needs to be repaired or something like that. And um, um, it's hard for people to handle. It, it really, really is. And so the important thing is for people not to stay at home and be depressed about it, that there are services available like to help them. Like the Senior Center. People like can the talk Senior Center. In other programs. In the programs that we provide, absolutely. So I just touch two de depressing subjects. <laughs> they need to be Very talked important, They're though. important. They need to be talk talked about. So what we're going to do is we're going to get off this negative and we're going to go into our um, next show, our next video, showing some of the active seniors and what they're doing at the Senior Center. Great. In there. So and after that's done, we'll be right back. Okay. The Senior Center. The Senior Center isn't just about the Senior Center. In a lot of places, it's kind of the hub, the, the focal, to bring other groups in to help the senior. This table, I've seen quite a few different items from this table. Can you explain some of them? Sure. Uh, everything ab about seniors and families of seniors, um, organizations of what's going on in the community. This is really not just upcoming events, but also everything that's going on in the area. So, for instance, we received uh, brochures for the Big E. That's here for folks. We have information on living choices. We have information on the schedule with the Friendly Bus. Uh, also, the uh, city transportation as well. So, we have the, the Nature Walk right here. We have sign-ups for... The Westwood um, Buffet Lunch at the Keene Senior Center for correct. August 27th. And the Friendly Meal. The Friendly Meals. You yes. had... Millie's Atlantic City four-day bus trip. Yes. Alaska. Trip to, gonna, one of our trips to Alaska. Yeah. see Sarah Palin or is she going to be on I don't think so. <laughs> her hopefully future son-in-law, but he doesn't want to. He wants to become mayor. When that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> then you have um, the VA, federal benefits for veterans. Yes. We, we yes. have, again, a, a lot of World War II and Korean veterans. Oh, many, many, many of them. Again, yes, we do. A lot of them never took advantage, or advantage ain't the word, but never used the VA system because they thought, I'm lucky I came back alive, so right. I'm not going to use it. But as we're getting older, some of the injuries and illnesses they suffered in the military are, not, are starting to catch up. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> Such important information. When Red Cross has something going on, we have that out here as well. We've had information from the Historical Society. It might be, for instance, there was a senior coffee social so, at the bowling alley that was free for them. We have that. Uh, we have through HCS the Nurses in, which is our blood pressure check, and we also have flu clinics and so forth. Other trips, we always have a coupon box where their people bring in their coupons from the papers. They share with everybody in case they would like and, to use um, coupons. A couple other ones, the AIP defensive driving. Oh, we have those classes now three times a year. They used to be once a year, and we have them three to four times a year now. And some, comp and some insurance companies really require them to get a reduced um, rate on your insurance. So they will do that. Not all, but, but many would. do. That once they know, once you're a certain age, and if you take that driving defensive driving course, um, you will get a discount on your insurance, yes. And uh, we also have uh, AARP uh, tax prep here, January, right up before April 15th. And it is packed full here. And the, we have four to five uh, volunteers that's with AARP that do that. It's every Monday. And <clears throat> I know people use H&R Block and other ones, but I'm not always a, a big fan. Where I see people with a simple 1040A or a 1040EZ mm -hmm. go and pay $65, $70, something that's going to take less than five minutes they could do themselves. Right. And a lot of people are a little leery of doing it themselves because there might be some questions involved. And also, especially where lately, these past few years, there have been some uh, programs where the seniors receive $600 or a refund on their taxes. And you've got to know how to fill out your taxes properly or what paperwork you need in order to have that correct and for free. The AARP does that. You'd be surprised. And then also, um, uh, it could be perhaps um, a senior might have a disabled child. 
but they're part-time working and so through an organization yeah. in town, they have to take care of taxes and they may have a lot of questions and they come in and, and have help with that as well. And it's really strange, again, going to the old Yankee tradition. A lot of seniors have no problem taking all their financials to a perfect stranger, showing it to them as long as they're writing a check for them to see. <laughs> but if you take someone from ARP or, or some other professional uh -huh. that wants to come and help them, they have a really, really tough problem with showing their financials to a total stranger that's going to help them to do it for free. Well, I think uh, that is slowly changing, actually. We had more people with that program. We had a 23% increase this past winter with that than we did the year before. And, and I think the word is getting out how trusting and how good these people are and that it's absolutely free. It's there for the community. And uh, we're glad that we can hold those uh, services for those people. Okay. We'll swing around to the, <clears throat> the age in motion. We were talking yes. earlier about another class to, for, for balancing and bone structure. <laughs> this is the age in motion. Age in motion. Yes. And this is what we're talking about downstairs for, for balancing and helping uh, muscle muscle, muscle strength. Retreat, strength. Yes. Yes. Um, positive exercise program. Positive exercise, exercise program, program, as our leader here <laughs> says. I don't like ink. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. age in motion originally. <laughs> Um, uh, we have uh, two age of motion classes. We have one that meets Monday and Fridays, and this one, Tuesdays and Thursdays, which we're here today. And um, particularly what this program does is with free weights for your ankles and legs, as well as you see as they're beginning to pick up their hand weights. I think she's mad at you. You better, not, you better, you better call it positive, <laughs> not... <laughs> Age of motion. <laughs> Not age in motion, <laughs> positive exercise. Pep. 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 Yeah, yes. that sounds like a lot better. Isn't that great, Pep? And you will see them use their hand weights and so forth as they uh, will be strengthening their arms, strengthening their legs and ankles, and also hip rotation. And they will also, with the bands, use stretching as well. <laughs> and they also have balance positions as well. <laughs> Which is the worst. <laughs> they have to stand on one leg for quite a while and so forth. But this is an example of how it's so important to keep our strength, keep the mobility of our joints and so forth going, and as well as our balance. As we age, we're losing that all the time. Mother Nature takes that away. And if we keep up with programs like this, we abate a lot of that and uh, give us a better quality of life to be able to move around but, and do what we need to do. But I've watched TV. I don't have to do anything. If my hip goes, I go get a new one. My knee goes, I get a new one. <laughs> I don't have to exercise, right? No, Everything will be taken care of. No. If my that, balance is off, I can get that new bracelet. <laughs> you know, if my blood pressure is too high, I can pop all the pills. Why should I have to do any work? <laughs> not a quality of life, though. No, no. It's not good to sit home, watch TV, and not use those mechanisms for our body. You know. Um, I can see the ladies want to go. Yes. You do our squats. Yeah. Yes, and they. I'm going into the woods. <laughs> thank you, well, ladies. Well, thank you for your time. We're standing now in, in the lodge function room. Yes. Um, you've done quite a bit of work and upgrade over the years. Yes. We were able to put curtains up that has really brought a warmth to the room. There's been painting that's been done. Uh, certainly there has been uh, new padding on the chairs that have been done. Um, so there's still a lot of repairs that need to be done here. This old 
Fabric on the walls. Uh, it's time to go. That was okay in earlier years, not now. Um, and uh, certainly probably better lighting and uh, we have an old, old, old air conditioner <laughs> system here that creaks and moans when we <laughs> use it and uh, certainly not efficient, but uh, we do have it, yes. And we'll be going later to, you have a new kitchen. Brand new kitchen, kitchen it's beautiful. From Beb Therian and Melanson's company donated quite a bit. Quite a King, bit. Ba Kingsbury, Kingsbury donated, I think, another $5,000. And you had some private donations that, that brought up the kitchen. Absolutely, and through a lot of members as and well. Through a lot like, of members. Yes. So really, this function room is now available for use to be rented out by the public. Yes. Uh, we've had meetings here. Uh, we've had trainings with uh, Red Cross. We've had birthday parties, anniversary parties. We've even had Christmas parties with other organizations in the community. And the kitchen makes it so available. Yeah. It's, it's state of the art, brand new, and we can hold probably about, oh, 100 people, 75 to 100 people in this room. And this is really special because around the country, more and more senior centers, those 25, 50, and older anniversaries, they're holding it more in places like Senior Center because with the restrooms and everything, it's a heck of a lot more accessible. Yes. You've got the wheelchair and walker ramp coming in here. Yes. And it's at a slower pace. It's a more comfortable place. It's not like being at some of the other ones where you get a lot of traffic, both foot and car traffic. That's absolutely correct. It, it makes it very viable for those type situations, for those engagements. We had, in fact, the party was for a father that was here, our last group that rented from here. And uh, the children actually had their activities in that dining in small, area no. with the smaller room. And then everything else with the food and the buffet and everything was in here. And the bathrooms are right nearby. And it was so great. The family loved it because the children were right there. They could keep an eye. And everything else was here and the kitchen was great. So it, there are many reasons this is very useful. And you've also had, I think, there was a chamber band that's come in, I think, practice in one of those other rooms. They did in years past, yes, yes. And certainly any theatrical groups could rent space here and do some rehearsals and so forth, uh, as well as bands, musical groups. Uh, and, and really at night, there's no problem with parking. There's problem with parking during, during, during the, the day. day yes. But normally on the weekends at night, there's not much of a problem at all. No problem at all. Because if you, you can either you can use this parking lot, you can, use the park, you can park on the street, or even use the Elm Street parking lot. Yes, that's right. Very accessible. No it's problem. Very accessible. So if anybody was thinking of renting it, who do they call? They call us here at 352-5037, and we can set them right up. Okay, and so let's go in and look at the kitchen. Yes, we'd love to show okay. you that. So we're here in the brand new kitchen. Yes. A professional grade kitchen. Yes. And as a look, you got professional grade refrigerator, you got stove. Yes. The old microwave. So if people want to come and rent this, then they, either, they can either prepare the meal here or have a buffet and keep it warm in this area. Absolutely. It's wonderful that we have the regular refrigerator and the professional refrigerator has all the large shelves so you can put trays of food, large cakes or cases of soda or something like that. We have wonderful stainless steel counter uh, top space that is over by the stove as well as here as well as regular countertop. Wonderful gas oven and frame, six burner stove. Um, Plus, we have this wonderful pickup window or through window of any kind if you wanted to set up a short buffet area there or a coffee area. It's very, very handy. That's been very useful for most of the parties we've so had here. So you can here. use a buffet over here. You can have pastries and desserts over there. Yes. We have a top-notch um, sink and cleaning area. Yes, the three basin. It's a three base sink. And as far as fire protection, completely up to oh, code, brand to new fire suppression. Brand new, yes. So in a lot of ways, you follow some of the same requirements that are put on regular restaurants out in town. Yes. Anything that has to do with serving to the public Pope. of any sort, you need to meet those requirements. So we had to go through that process. And again, so if anybody's interested and they want to use it, especially the holiday season's coming up. Or yes. I was reading, people keep going here, so I'm reading, I read a lot. 
but I was reading in New Hampshire, the average wedding cost is down about $3,000 because families can no longer afford it. Uh -huh. Again, a place like this is another way to help reduce your cost. It's another option. It certainly is. And, and we're here for anybody in the area, the city, as well as the area of Keene. They just need to give us a call. Okay. Okay, we're kind of in the senior center multimedia room. Yes. Yeah. We call this our library. As you can see by all the library books that have been donated to us, people can come in, get a book they want to read, and just bring it back. There's no signing out or anything like that. And we refurbish the books. As people bring us new books, we donate the books to uh, other organizations and put in the new books. We also have DVDs, and we have videos, and we also have music on cassette and so forth, and CDs. We have something for everybody, and it's used very, very much. You'd be surprised. This room is also used where people come and sit and read a little bit. Some people will sit in here and relax between two programs, let's say. Let's say someone from AIM that we just the lady saw. Didn't like AIM. My, <laughs> great, -gran my AIM. great grandmother always said she was right and never doubted. So <laughs> <laughs> she said AIM doesn't work. <laughs> So after that program, <laughs> if we were serving lunch today, they may want to sit in here and read a little bit, have a cup of coffee, converse with some other folks, and then have lunch once it's served. Um, so people use this room as a nice relaxing area. And this is also one of the rooms that can be rented out too. It can. If you wanted a small oh. meeting of some nature, yes, absolutely. And because some of the people, you may have some clients in town and you don't want to be at a hotel, pay an expensive one, or you don't want to be in a restaurant where everyone's listening to your business. Yes. It's a nice, comfortable, got plenty of light, got the old window, the old mm -hmm. federal type construction. It's, it's lovely a, in it's here. It's a relaxing, and then you have internet access in this room, so yes, they, can we do, do. they can do stuff. You can yeah. seal it up, and it'd be a nice, quiet, saluted place to do your business. Absolutely. Perfect for that. Okay. Then we'll go into one of your bigger rooms, the old classic room. Yes, the parlor. The parlor. <laughs> We're now in the, the classic parlor. Yes, we are. And a lot of youngsters don't understand what a parlor is. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason You're it right. used to be a parlor is because when a family member passed on, the wake and funeral was usually held right here. That is, that is an old term, yes. Parlors, though, back then, and especially in Victorian yeah. times, too, the parlor where people could sit around and visit is what we know as the living room, living, room. living room today. So this is the comfortable area near the reception area for our front office. And people come in here and sit down as well and relax. Or this is where people can sit and wait if they're waiting for me or if they're waiting for someone else and so forth. Um, also, we have small programs here. A book group is here, which we have um, eight people or more sometimes. And it's a nice area. We have the uh, doors that close. And uh, we sit in here and discuss group. Our, within our group, we discuss about the book we've read that month. And uh, we read all kinds of literature. We've also had some good programs about, uh, for instance, fraud, uh, that we wanted to use the television here to show a DVD. And it was a nice, small, intimate group with a local policeman and um, about safety and so forth. And it was a nice atmosphere for that. And people felt really comfortable as compared to a small group putting it in the big room that we visited earlier. It was just, it was either the Keen Sentinel or the AIP magazine that just st stated that one out of every five um, elderly people, 65 and over, has been a victim of fraud. Absolutely. The rate is so high. There's so much of it out there. It's amazing. <clears throat> Even uh, the insurance, the new insurance yeah. changes, and so already, boom, it's like within 48 hours, <laughs> these, these scams come up, and, and they're so believable. And seniors want to believe them. Uh, so, uh, so important to teach them about yeah. all the angles. And you had, you've had meetings in the past for, for widowers and survivors? Yes, yes, that's correct. They meet in here as well. A nice support group that uh, is for widows and um, widowers. And uh, 
learning to cope and to uh, move on through life and what those changes mean and so forth and help them to uh, assist in what, what they need to do with their decision making. And I heard that the senior center is trying to work with some organizations like the, what is the boy, not the boys, um, big brother, big sister, yes. kind of that multi-generation mentoring. Yes, we've been talking with them about having some of their programs after school because of the location to come here after school and work with them as well. Yes, we're, we're <coughs> working on that. And we've had other intergenerational levels where we're working with the colleges, undergraduate as well as graduate. And we actually um, are working with high school students as well. And high school students have been working with our garden program and so forth. That has I know you got wonderful. some things ready to grow out there. You oh, <laughs> yes. We're harvesting already. <laughs> yes. The um, one thing off a little bit, but a lot of the research when they're looking for especially minority, inner city minority groups, black youths, um, Hispanic youths, it was just really strange. They didn't, di it was a really tough relationship between the child and their parents. Uh huh. And they would go back and quote unquote disrespect them. But when it came to the grandmother, it was amazing. It was like no one wanted to yell at grandma. Grandma was up here. Yes. And they're finding out how important the grandmother is, is to the development of a lot of low income, especially minority children. Yes. Oh. What can I say? I'm an advocate for seniors and for advocate uh, for <coughs> grandparents and so forth, and great grandparents, yeah. what have you. They are so important to our society and so important to our families. And what has happened with society over the decades mm. is we're all split off everywhere. There are some children that are very uncomfortable being with seniors because they've never had the Senior. experience of it. And to think, you know, I, I'm not that old in a generation, and yet I remember having grandparents in, on both sides of the family right nearby within walking distance, having uh, great aunts, great uncles, cousins everywhere. There was always family, always family around. If mom and dad couldn't be there, there was always someone else in the family that could be there. Today, that's not true. Uh, we're all split up wherever we are, anywhere in the world. And so, um, Children need to be around older folks just to understand who they are and the respect that's there and also the wisdom that comes from those people, the stories they can tell you and to help you straighten out in your mind maybe some questions that you have or to have that funny sense of humor, you know, that a child may need or that little helping hand at something. Uh, seniors are just so valuable, the, um, and uh, so that has to be built up all the time. I'm a firm believer of intergenerational programming. I remember when I was a kid, my mother wasn't around for a while, so I had to. I lived with my great grandma Robinson. Oh, great! Oh, <laughs> and, and I still remember clear as day every night before, after we finished eating, she gave me a spoon of cod liver oil, <laughs> and she gave me a little shot of um, warm sherry. And now I understand it's, it's, it was amazing why. Um, we always went to sleep so quickly, <laughs> and we were always so regular in the morning. <laughs> but I still remember playing in the coal bin. Yo, sure. I still remember bringing up the wood to fill the cast iron stove. Oh, sure. And it's kind of like, yep, great grandma Robinson. And you still remember those memories because she was firm, but she also allowed you to, to go a little bit farther. And she was supportive. She was supportive. She was. She was very supportive, I'm <clears> sure. And... Although as firm as she was, it was the right times where she was firm and she was there to put the arm around you at the same time or to put the Band-Aid on the scrape. You right. know, it's, it's, uh, that's different than having the parents that are more direct of what the rules and so forth, you know, where children want to go, I don't want to do that, you know. But when it's Grammy or Grandpa or not, aunt, it's a little different story, you know. They go, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this. And yeah. I still remember my mother coming back once and she was smoking. And my grandma, great-grandma aunt said, no one smokes in the house. <laughs> my mother says, I'm smoking. And she threw my mother outside in a snowstorm. <laughs> and I'm going as, hey, you want to smoke? I says, no, I don't, want, I don't want to tick off Grandma Robinson. <laughs> so I never smoked. So some of those little things. It stays with us. It, it stays with it. And so, yeah, you're right. The energy generational is so important. Very, very important, yes. And um, <clears throat> so 
as we finish up and we go around the room, you've got some pianos, you've got a lot of information, you've got mm -hmm. some of these um, handbooks. Yes. Um, quite a few. The Healthwide Handbook, a self-care guide to you and your family. Mm -hmm. Over 180 healthcare topics, so there's a lot of questions and it can answer, be answered. answered yes. yes. Yes, and we have board games as well. The travel and, so and the forth. other ones that keep the mental to keep the mental, mental ability joke. going on. Yes, uh, we have all sorts of brochures over there about rehab therapy and uh, uh, hospice care, but also illness management and about arthritis and foods that are available. And this a lot over here is about. Uh, different housing options and so forth. There's everything from Keene Housing Authority to uh, Southwest Services has housing. Uh, there's Prospect Place, there's the Woodward, there's Bentley Commons, and there's many, many, many more. Langdon Place there. is helping. Langdon Place is another, and it goes on and on. And uh, we are having a community series that's coming up starting September that is covering all the range of the decision making of planning the rest of our lives. We plan with our families <laughs> and children. We plan for our careers. But boy, once we get later in life, we have another plan we have to work on. And one of the segments is about downsizing and what are the housing options that meet your needs. So it's right from moving into a condo, giving up your home, mm. to uh, living in a uh, subsidized senior housing, to what is assisted living, and what is a nursing home. Because a lot of people think uh, nursing care facility is the same as assisted living, and it is not. And depending on insurances and what is out-of-pocket expense are very different. And so, and what are the New Hampshire laws yeah. with all of that? So that's one of the segments, actually, as well as another segment is um, uh, advanced directives and what are the New Hampshire laws with that and helping questions and answers and how do you communicate with your family on what your decisions are. Another is um, uh, what is your legacy? What do you want to leave behind? What are the pictures? What are the ownership of things? What is it you want to give to an organization? Mm -hmm. uh, did the senior center mean something to you? What will you give to the senior center? Um, and you don't have to be terribly wealthy for something like that. All of us have a legacy of some kind. Do we want to give to our community church? Well, was I a leader in Boy Scouts? Do I want to give some of whatever to Boy Scouts? Well, into the seniors, or whatever. It, it's One of the big donors to the kitchen was a legacy donor. Donors. Yes, it was. It came out of the clear blue. It did. So, um, you know, everybody has a story <laughs> yep. to tell, and it can be organizing yep. all the photographs yep. and putting little CDs together to all the family. That could be, too. I mean, it's, and then it, it could be anything, you know. Uh, and all of this is planning that you have to do now. And uh, we'll have help with that with professionals, and it'll be at the library. And uh, 6 p.m., starting with the second Tuesday in December, and go right through every Tuesday to the first Tuesday of October. I want to thank you for allowing me to visit the Senior Center. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad you could come by. And hopefully, if anybody wants to donate time or money or whatever, yes. they'd be more than willing to contact you. Yes, they can reach me, Sandy Bandieri, here at the Senior Center. And when they help, when they make donations, they help more than just a few people. They help a community. They help a community. Yes, they do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hi, back. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things with the computers, seniors want to stay more and more in touch with their families. Mm -hmm. That's not only their sons and daughters, but their grandkids. And so through the computer program, they can do that. Explain how, um, how involved the seniors are getting in that. Oh, the seniors are getting involved more and more. There's so much to learn. There's even so much to learn for us every day with technology. It's jumping leaps and bounds. Um, well, the seniors are finding that using email is much easier to keep connections with families since families are pretty much here and there all over the country or world with employment. So that connection with emails uh, has become quite important to them. Also, now with digital cameras that everybody has, they can download their pictures, share them. The sons and daughters uh, can 
email some pictures of their Excuse grandchildren, me. a new one mm. born, or something like that, and uh, it's instantaneous, and it's like they're right there, and they can talk back and forth through the computer. Uh, it helps them with their budgets. It helps them um, uh, look and see and research some information they may, may need to know uh, that they may not even know where to start looking. They can certainly Google it and find wonderful information, whether it's health, searching for a doctor in town. They might have moved to the town recently. Um, look for websites on what's available and so forth. Uh, more and more. And we have this wonderful, wonderful person named Roger who donates his time every Wednesday morning with this computer class. And we can only take seven at a time, and there's always a waiting list to get in this <laughs> six-week class. And uh, it's important. It's important. We don't have to be computer whizzes, yeah. but at least get to the level of where we can communicate more. And I know we talked about it in the film segment, but we really have to thank Cheshire Medical for the computers yes. that they donated a couple years ago. Yes. Uh, it's wonderful that we have those. We have a whole computer lab. Mm -hmm. We have eight computers all together. Uh, and it's just perfect for l the learning process. And um, I know that more and more hospitals, you're getting doctors, geriatric doctors, geriatric nurses. Is the Cheshire Medical Center going towards that direction? Do you know of? in going into the direction of, of uh, recommending people or to, geri geriatric doctors that are actually specialized in taking care of some of our seniors yes yes there's more of that at <clears throat> cheshire medical there is a geriatric department and uh, those folks like to work closely on what's going on in the community with seniors and in particular dr leno is very active in the community she has done a lot. And it's, it's good to hear because a regular, do <clears throat> a regular doctor is a doctor, but geriatrics, yes. just like pediatrics, have their own special needs. Yes, yes. So it's wonderful that we have those in the community. Yes. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide in, take a little break so I can clear my throat, and we'll <laughs> <laughs> we will go in and do our little fall foliage again. Great. I love to see that foliage. <laughs> and you know what? It's going to bring more money in. And you know what? We'll talk about bus tours when we get back because fall foliage brings a lot of seniors up here taking it. And so we'll talk about our seniors going on some of the trips. Sure. Okay. We'll be back in a few minutes.
were talking about um, trips. Yes. The senior center makes some money with the, the trips, correct? Not well, too much, but. No, we don't really make money, <laughs> yeah, so but. to speak, with our trips. But uh, we do provide trips that helps. Uh, we cover our costs cover and costs. so forth and, and maybe just a little extra. Um, no, no bundles and bundles. Of money, no, just no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Not the price of chartering okay. those buses. Okay. <laughs> But we do have some really nice trips available for seniors. We've uh, done everything from going down to Connecticut and going on a boat ride on the Connecticut River and going on an 1800 steam train to this year we went to Portland for a harbor cruise and have a wonderful uh, lobster clam bake meal. Um, what's coming up is having an Oktoberfest with beer and oompa band <laughs> in Massachusetts. Polka. <laughs> and uh, no polka, but a lot of oompa. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, we have a New York City overnight trip, going to see Radio City Music Hall and uh, seeing the last of the King Tut exhibit in America. And also for that dream trip, we have a cruise to Alaska for next year. And then also at the last part of November, we're celebrating the holidays by going and seeing the mansions down at Newport, Rhode Island. So uh, there's a little bit of everything for everybody to get out and about. Well, that goes against the old urban myth that you guys just produce um, trips down to Foxworth, just gambling trips. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there are already so many gambling yeah. trips out there. All, for instance, um, Adventure Travel, I believe, mm. does that. There's a couple other organizations <laughs> that do it. And so there's so many other offerings, we shouldn't even try to get involved in that. And what we have to be careful of is our population isn't so large that we, if you have too many people going for the same pie, then nobody's filling their buses and paying for their costs for the trips. So uh, it's better that if those folks want to do gambling, great, then there's those options. And uh, we have different options. Park and Rec has options. Thomas Transportation has different options of, of going on trips as well as gambling trips. So I think if we all do different things, then everybody has a wide range to go and have a good time. <laughs> and you talk about gambling. Is there a problem with, with seniors or is there a growing problem with seniors and gambling addiction? I can't state for a fact about the statistics and so forth, but I've seen seniors where that's the most important thing they have to do and, and whether it's their nickels, dimes, quarters and slot machines and so forth, uh, it, it's uh, in a way it is. You keep thinking you're going mm. to win that time and uh, it, you know, they may say I'm only taking $50 this time but does $50 buy groceries too for, for next week or the week after or the week after that. I think as long, pe long as people budget what they can afford to go out and entertain themselves, I think that's okay. But uh, I think everybody should just be careful with that. The, um, around the country, as a lot of um, families with mom and grandpa, they just can't afford to put them in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to put them in um, <clears throat> daycare. And there's some places where they go in and pick up mom in the morning, drop her off at the senior center, and don't pick them at the end of the day. And <clears throat> that causes some problems with senior centers because the mom and dad or grandpa may have medical needs that the senior center doesn't know about. Right. Uh, one thing we have to be clear about the senior center is that we have no medical background whatsoever. We would not be able to take someone in that particular instance. Uh, we are not caregivers. That's what uh, elderly daycare centers are for. Um, or, you know, they could have someone HCS come in and uh, even through a doctor's prescription be able to come in and take care of some of the things with that particular person, mom and dad. Uh, but people need to get around themselves, be completely independent, know what they're doing, and can be a part of whatever activity they want to be in. But uh, we're not a, set up to be caregivers there or um, uh, any nursing or having any medical background whatsoever. 
Do you ever have the visiting nurse come to the senior center or some of the other medical um, organizations to help out, give advice to the seniors? Oh, sure. We have HCS uh, and also Langdon Place also comes in and gives great information. That's part of our program mm -hmm. structure that we have where it's either after a lunch or perhaps on another day where they can come and hear about the services that are available. Our staff at the front office is trained to know what services are out in the community mm -hmm. and the area and even the state and we help with referral services with families. So everyone works together so you don't duplicate or triplicate services. You want to maximize the services. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> it, it's really amazing how important the senior center is to the community and the welfare and the well-being of our, our seniors. They've worked total long, productive lives, some of them 40, 50 years in factories. Yes. They get out of school.